Hey everyone, today we'll be talking about bumblebees. Bumblebees are large, hairy bees with a loud, distinct buzz, and with only 28 days to live, they have to be sure they make it worth their while. As shown here, there are queens, males, and workers. Queens and workers have stingers, whereas males do not. And when queens and workers do sting you, though very rare, they won't die unlike honeybees. You may be wondering where it is that bumblebees live. Bumblebees usually live underground in holes made by larger animals, while others nest above ground in abandoned bird nests, as we'll show in the next slide. As you can see here, this group of bumblebees has adapted to live in an unoccupied birdhouse. Bumblebees are social animals and colonies can contain up to 150 individual bees. This is quite small compared to honeybees that can have nests with over 50,000, so they like to keep their teams pretty small. Another adaptation that bumblebees have adopted is a technique called fanning, where they use their wings as fans to reduce the heat inside their nest or raise their body temperature. It's no secret that these bumblebees have an extremely fast metabolism. It's said that a bumblebee with a full stomach is only ever about 40 minutes from starvation, so they're constantly eating. This extreme hunger, however, can drive these bumblebees to participate in nectar robbing. This is where some bumblebees cheat by collecting nectar from a plant without entering and pollinating the flower, therefore just simply taking the nectar for themselves without using the pollen as they should. There are, thankfully, positive adaptations that bumblebees have adopted. One is a way to release a bunch of pollen where the muscles on the wings unattach themselves from their wings and they vibrate those same muscles without flying. And what that does is help shake down the pollen from that flower. Another is scent marking the flowers, leaving behind a message to others that the nectar is gone. This reduces the time spent probing the flowers without nectar so that they can get the job done efficiently. Unfortunately, there are predators for our bumblebee friends, including birds and bears and all the animals that forage underground because that's the most accessible way to get to bumblebees. While we might not be able to control the animal predators, we can help bumblebees in other ways. Bumblebees are picky about the flowers they collect nectar from. So planting flowers that are blue and violet, which are their favorites, is a great idea. Their preference isn't due to how the flower looks though. It's due to the fact that the violet and blue flowers are often the most nectar rich and therefore the most beneficial to them. But why do we wanna help the bumblebees? What's in it for us? Well, the pollination that bumblebees spread throughout the crops creates 75% of the food that we consume. So without bumblebees, we wouldn't have the same amount of food that we currently do. Interestingly enough, here in the Sonoran Desert, we have our own bumblebee, the Sonoran bumblebee, which is a large and colorful native bee of the Sonoran Desert that visits a very broad range of flowers, which is incredible and super cool to know that we have our own representative bumblebee. As we've learned, bumblebees contribute so much to our society. So if we make promises to protect them, they'll continue to provide for us, which is extremely important. Thank you so much.